the heading is probability trees, and I've got this multi-part question for you. It's from an HSC, and um, it's a good illustration of why probability trees can be useful because we looked at tree diagrams before. They're very simple objects. Whoops. But the particular thing about them is that tree diagrams, as we've looked at them so far and we've you know, looked at in year 9 to 10 as well, they cover events that are all equally likely. All equally likely. Which is why, if, for example, um, we looked at flipping a coin three times in a row, that gives you three possible, sorry, eight possible outcomes at the end, and each one is equally likely. So it's um, one out of eight would be the chance for each one. But we use probability trees where we say actually these two are not the same. Maybe one event is more likely than another. Hey guys, where have you come from? Oh, I have we left that bag in the hole. Because when it was locked, all the we went to the art. Grab a seat, hurry up. So, as this question unfolds, you'll see why this is a perfect example of when a probability tree is useful. So, we've got Pat and Chad, they're playing a game. They take turns throwing two dice. Okay, so it's Pat throws two dice, then it's going to be Chad's turn, he throws two dice, etc. Okay, the game is won by the first player who throws a pair of sixes at the same time, right? Pat starts the game. So there's a simple setup, they each take their turns, but even though it's remarkably simple, there are some bits of it that are a bit of a curveball. So let's start by answering the simple one, right? Find the probability that Pat wins on his first throw. So Pat does start the game. So what condition does he need to meet to win? Two sixes. Two sixes. Okay, so I'm going to say probability of two sixes. What is that equal to? We've, this is a common situation. Pair of sixes? There are, I mean, I could actually draw a large one of these, right, with six branches the first time, and then six branches off each of those branches, but that's a bit of a waste of time. They're all equally likely. Only one of those is a pair of sixes. Do you agree with that? There's only one way to get that. So one is the favorable outcomes, and the total sample space will be... How many, how many different options will there be for the two? It's 36, right? 6 times 6. And you could draw a dot diagram, would also do that quite easily, but there's nothing complicated about this, so we don't need to, um, it, we don't need to invest that time to understand and get the question. So, there's the probability that Pat Witt's on his first throw, part B. And here's where the probability tree is going to come in. What's the probability that Pat wins the game on his first or his second throw? Okay, now pause for a minute. Remember, in probability, as in, say, you know, like trigonometry and that kind of thing, sometimes a single word makes a big difference. I want you to have a look here, and I want you to tell me, are we doing, in the end, addition or multiplication with our probabilities, and how do you know which one? <coughs> Anyone throw, throw an answer? Come on, Thinora, what do you reckon? Addition. addition. Why do you say addition? It says say it again. It says or, first or second throw. So first throw will have its probability. We actually just worked that out, okay? Second throw will also have its probability. The or indicates you're gonna add those two together, okay? So I'm gonna write probability, um, Pat wins first or second. Okay, so I know I'm gonna be adding two things together. So that's the first thing that's in my mind. I've already worked out his probability of winning on the first throw. That's one on 36, that was part A. So now I've gotta work out this other bit and here is where the probability tree comes in. For Pat to win on his second throw, what must happen, what series of events has, have to unfold? Well, can he win on his first throw and then progress to the second throw? No, because the game is over already, right? So that means, when we think about our branches here, right? I could say like one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. but I don't need to worry about that. I just need to think about whether he wins or whether he loses on that first throw. These are the two events that I'm really interested in, right? If this is one out of 36, this other event, we haven't talked about this much formally, but hopefully you remember it from earlier on. This other event here, it's got a special name. It starts with a C. It's the complement, very good. So this is a complementary event, which means that the two probabilities for an event and its complement, what do they add up to? They add up to one. So can you tell me what's the probability that he doesn't win on that first throw? 30, five on 36. Okay, 
So we've already thought about what happens if he wins. So I'm just going to tick that off. It's dealt with now. But I want to get to him winning on the second throw. So first he has to lose. What's the next event that happens? Have a think. Pat just had a roll, right? Whose turn is it now? It's Chad, because they take their turns. Look, where does it say there? Uh, it's in the first sentence, right? So two thirds of the way along. They take turns throwing two dice. So now the next branch has nothing to do with Pat. It's Chad wins or loses. Are you okay with this? Now this is a little bit weird. We're used to every branch always continuing off until the end, but clearly we've just said, if he wins first time, the game is over. So the branches are not going to continue up here. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute. I haven't finished the solution, but I wonder if you can finish the rest of this diagram, put all the information on there, and then work out what's your total probability going to be. Can I give you a couple minutes to have a think? Off you go. A lot of you have um, headed down the right track, uh, quite literally, in fact. We all agreed on this 1 out of 36. It represents the probability of Pat winning first go. Good for you, Pat. Uh, but it is highly likely that he does not, right? So, just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. You good, Erica? You happy? Yes? Great. Now, in order for Pat to win, not on his first, but on his second throw, we actually have to, and if you've got other colors here, you might as well use them, right? You've got to follow the chain of events that leads to that happening. First, to win on the second round, he has to lose. Then Chad also has to lose, otherwise the game is over. And then suddenly here, that's when he gets his second opportunity to win. So you can see, if I look at the branches here, this is where, in fact, there's a bit of a trick question that I threw out to you and the Thanura correctly answered nonetheless, which is that, are you adding or are you multiplying? And the answer is yes, because you have to add these two separate events. But in order to get to this one, you, you have to multiply along because you're reading from left to right across the probability tree. Do you remember we talked about this before? Now, I'm going to put this second probability, I'm going to put it in brackets here. Now, we know our order of operations well enough to know that I don't need to put the brackets here to indicate the correct answer, but I like to put the brackets there to, to sort of communicate to you, here's one event, here's a completely separate one. It's more for my brain than anything else, and then to communicate that to others. Now, if I've remembered this correctly, you're going to get some awkward fraction on here, right? Some 2,000 on 40, what is it, 46? 4658, six, six, is that right? 56, five, six. Five, six. yeah, that sounded better. Okay, great. Now, um, part of the problem is this, is, does that look right? I, I don't know, right? It's, it's hard to get a, like, oh, I, I know my 46,656 really well, and that gives me a great sense of it. But we can at least know if you, for example, converted both of these guys into decimals, okay? Uh, in fact, let's do that. Can we, can someone, work? oh, great, that's thank you. Uh, what do we got here? 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.054. Four, dot, dot, dot. What, someone got 136? Who's got it? I just want a decimal value for it. Zero point, wait, what? Zero point zero two seven. Zero two seven. Eight, dot, 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 dot. Okay, now you just have a look at this, right? From here to here, the chance has increased. Does that make sense? Should it increase? Yes, it should, because you're considering the first or the second. You're just adding them together. It had better get bigger. Um, it's almost double. It's almost double. Wow, really? Why do you think that might be? Well, have a look at these conditions here. These ones here. Would you describe them as unlikely or likely? Those, those are highly likely. Like They're like 93. Uh, 97 percent chance that one of these is going to happen. So these are almost certain and then this event here is just like the event you started with, 1 out of 36, right? So that's why you've got, yeah, it's almost doubled, no big deal, okay? 